Hi guys, uh, it has been a while since I made the last video. So uh, today I would like to talk about factors that could cause the bow to twist. Uh, if you're here to learn how to fix bow twist, um, I will add a link in the description so that uh, you can watch how to fix bow twist. But this video is not about fixing, this is about uh, how you could identify situations in which could cause a twist and how to avoid it. And so uh, what inspired me for this video is that recently I sold this bow here to one of my customers and what happened was that uh, I inspected the bow and they uh, fine, the bow is straight, no issue and I shipped it out, delivered to him uh, upon stringing the bow, he complained that the bow is twisted. Okay, so if it's twisted, uh, I sent him the video to on how to ins how to inspect and fix the bow. I don't think he watched the video. I think he refused to watch the video. Um, and then I also asked him for a video to uh, to prove that the bow is twisted. And he also refused to uh, to send me a video as a proof. Uh, he insisted to have a warranted bow to get a, either a refund or a warranty. And let me tell you this, 99% of bow twist is not a defect, okay? 99% of bow twist is caused by the user, by the archer, not a problem of the boyer. It is not a defect. So, uh, since he refused to do anything, fine. I asked him to ship the bow back to me. And uh, as I had suspected, which I think is his stringing technique. His stringing technique has a problem. So, since he refused to do anything, fine. I, I just asked him to deliver it back to me. And uh, upon receiving it, I immediately strung this bow up. Uh, there is absolutely no problem with the bow. And I'm going to show you. The top side, the string is in the center. The bottom side, string is in the center. Let's look at the top limb. Okay, there is, the sear is perfectly aligned with the limb. There is absolutely no twist. The other side, again, absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with the limbs. I'm gonna draw this bow just to prove that there is no issue. I'm not gonna grab it or twist it or anything to compensate. I'm just gonna leave my, my palm open like this. And I'm going to do it numerous times just to prove that the pole has no issue. Okay, so back here. Again, nothing wrong here. Nothing wrong here. Nothing wrong here. And nothing wrong here. The bow is in absolutely perfect state. It is working absolutely fine. And yet he complained as a twist. So what does this mean? What does this prove? That there is a problem with his stringing technique. And that's why I say this now. I claim that 99% of bows that are twisted is caused by the archer, not a defect in the bow. Usually I will not warranty any bow twist because it is 99% of the time the archer's problem, not a defect in the bow. Uh, there are, however, one boyer. Throughout my 12 years in, in, in archery, I've only met one, one brand, just one brand. I'm not gonna name it here, but if you look through my, my uh, videos in the past, uh, you will see there's a situation where, th there's one video where I, where, where I complain about a nightmare of a, of a service I have from them. So, um, 
In the case of that particular boya, the twist of the bow is indeed a defect, a defect, a flaw in the design. And why am I so sure about it? So this is what happened back then. I'm not going to name them right here, but back then what happened was I string, not this bow, so I strung the bow out. And as usual, after I string them up, I always inspect making sure everything is straight. Before I leave them idle, meaning I'm not pulling it, not doing anything, just leave it there uh, for three hours and the bow becomes twisted on their own. Whereas if I do it with other brands, like example, Saluki bow, Navalny bow, Spearman bows, Mariner bows, Ali bow, AF archery. There's a lot of these bows I've had. And uh, I can string the bows up and leave them strong three months not doing anything with it, just leave it strong three months. The bows do not, I repeat, do not become twisted. Only that particular bow that I have problem with. So uh, why that particular bow had problem is because the way that he shaped the sear, let me change the bow. This is not a good example to show. Um, okay, so in that case where I had a nightmare boyer, was that when he shaped this seer here, he kind of, I believe, I believe, I do not know the actual fact, okay, but I believe he did it kind of free-handed, just shaped this free-handed. And so what happened was that if we look down from, a, from let's say your view would be like that, just look down the seer from this, this angle here, you will find that the left and right is not symmetric like a little bit asymmetry is normal because it is handmade right handmade but if it's so obvious that even an untrained eye bare eye just naked eyeball can tell a difference between the left and right it is skewed to one side then that is a manufacturing defect in the case of the nightmare case the seers are always off to one side, it's skewed, meaning that when, when I have the limbs aligned such that the limb is in a perfectly flat plane and it's bending correctly, the sear is twisted to one side. And there's nothing we can do about it because when you use such a bow, since it's always twisted to one side, eventually the limbs follow in that direction and becomes twisted. If you try to compensate by, by twisting the limb to the other side such that the sears are straight. Eventually, however, because the limbs are not straight, they will deform to another side. So in that case, it is a defect or a flaw in the design or the manufacturing defect. Uh, it is not the fault of the archer. But this is really, really rare. Like over the last 12 years, this, that boyer, okay, that boyer is the only case in which I have had this problem. All the other brands, I have had never this kind of issue. So, um, there is something to uh, just to know, right? Um, it can be, what I'm, what I'm saying is that the 1% case, right? 99% is the archer's fault. 1% case is the boy's fault. And that 1% can happen, but it's because of when they created this seer, let me align to the camera. Okay, when I created this seer, as you look down the seer here, you'll find that the left and right face is not symmetric. Okay, then it can be a problem. It can cause a twist, and this twist is not the archer's fault. It is the bowyer who constructed the, the seers asymmetrically. Okay, so uh, however, but th this situation I just explained is is the rarest form of twist. It is very very rare. Like really, really rare, like I said just now, over the last 12 years, there's only one boyer who had this problem. All the other boyers I've dealt with, I have no problem. I do not have this kind of issue. Okay, so that will be the least uh, common problem. Uh, the next one would be uh, transportation and storage. So, uh, let me just string this one so that I can uh, 
explain this one better. Okay, so when you store them, they're usually unstrung, right? Usually store them unstrung, uh, transportation included, usually transport them unstrung. Um, during transport, because they are usually packed in a box, hopefully, or some sort of uh, foam wrapped, the logistics company, they won't be as gentle as you or me. They just throw your bow all over the place, have other things stacked on top of your bow, and what could potentially happen is that, let's say, okay, let's say this way, right? Something is in the middle, pressing on it, and it can cause the bow to become twisted. Or maybe one side is held, and the other side has something pressing on it, and it can cause the bow to become, let me show the camera, like that, or the other side. See that? Right? It can cause a twist in the bow. Now, if you do that only for a very short, brief moment, it'll be fine. The problem, there won't be a problem with the boat. Uh, but usually when they do that during transport, they, the boat could be in that situation for a few hours or even a whole day. Hopefully, it's not a few days. It could happen. It can happen. The longer the journey is, the, the longer it's going to be exposed to this kind of situation. And therefore, when you receive the boat, because the bow has been forced to deform in a certain way for many hours, your bow may appear twisted upon arrival. Uh, if that's the case, now don't panic yet because actually this is the easiest one to fix. So uh, just I'll, I'll include the link in my description. Okay, just follow the video to fix the bow. Most often, you don't even need any heat to fix the bow because usually the bows are quite protected. There's only a little bit of twist. So you only need to uh, massage it, flex it back with some force. Uh, it won't be perfectly gentle. You do need some force to, to flex it back, uh, but it can be fixed without using heat. Uh, although severe cases will need heat, I'm just saying most of the time, if it gets deformed in transportation, usually you don't even need heat. Just bend it back with your bare hands. It's that easy. Um, then the next one, the next common factor, uh, temperature. Um, if you shoot under the hot sun, okay, let's say 12 noon peak in the noon, very, very hot, uh, and you are putting the bow right in the middle of the grass field, so it's really baking hot, and then you decided to use the bow and you do a very strong katra. Right? You, you spin, you torque the bow really hard. So what happens is uh, these laminated bows, the glue that they use is epoxy, epoxy resin. And this glue, this glue it softens at about 40 degrees Celsius, which is not a lot because our body, our body temperature is 37. So if you feel that the bow is warmer than you, it's more than 37. And that's only 3 degrees away from 40. So uh, it doesn't take much to soften the glue. And when that happens, of course your bow don't twist immediately. But what happens is when you shoot your bow with a strong cut, a strong torque, that softened limb is now vulnerable. And when you twist it hard, you add a little bit of twist each time you do that. And over a long period, your bow will become twisted. Uh, and of course, now the, the final factor, which is also the most common, the most common problem, stringing the bow. Okay, Stringing the bow is what causes most twist. Um, I'm going to show you two of the common stringing method and how they can cause the twist. So you should avoid those things. Uh, let me change back to the other bow. Okay, so this one I'll need a full body view. Okay. Now the most common stringing method like this, right? 
Yeah. This is the easiest method to twist your bow. Why? I want you to look here. If you lift the bow up a little bit, you will twist that side. Okay? Because you see, it is pressing against here and pressing against here. You are twisting the sear. So if you lift it too high up, you twist that side. You have to lean it down. Okay? Lean it down, not up. Down. A lot of you should bring it as high as possible, then you twist that side. Okay? You want to lean it down slightly more slanted so that you do not twist against your own feet. Next one is here. Don't grab this part. Open your palm up. Open it. And just support like this. Okay? As you push the bow, you have to support like that. If you try to grab this, there's a good chance you're going to twist this side. Okay? So, this method is actually my least recommended method because you have potential to twist that and this. This is the most common way a bow becomes twisted. Now I'm going to show you the other one, the Manchu way of stringing. Okay, it looks like this. Now, the Manchu method, you have to put the... Okay, I would prefer to put the, low, the, sorry, the top limb on the lower side. Okay, The top limb is actually usually a little bit longer or a little bit more flexible than the bottom limb. So I want to put the top limb down. Like this. Right? Alright, so we've got a good view there. Now, common mistake with this form is that they try to pull up. Okay? Do not pull up. The bow sits above the knee here. Okay? Above the knee here. Not all the way up here. Not all the way up. Because if, if you force it all the way up, you will twist this side. You actually leave it near your knee. Also, Observe this area here. Uh, there is a gap between the limb and my crotch. So you don't lift it up like this because if you do that, okay, I'm going to try to do it slowly. Imagine if you do this, if you try to lift it up and you're locking this side, right? If you're locking this side and you lift it up like that, you're going to twist this entire limb. So you actually don't do that way. You leave it more horizontal. The bow is more horizontal, not vertical. Okay, horizontal, like this. You have to open your leg wide to support the handle. Okay, let me, let me show you, see? The handle, not here. Okay, you don't do it like this. This is wrong. You are bending only one limb. That's wrong. You have to open your leg wide, support the handle. Right? And then this hand here, I want to observe how I hold this one. Okay. See that? How I support with only my fingers pulling, okay, and the thumb locks the string from coming out. My body is leaning into the bow. I can slide straight down the entire limb face, okay, the, the belly side. So I bend, following the direction of the bow. When you're doing this, do not grab like this, okay. Observe. Here, the thumb towards this part here. We press it like this. See? The thumb and this part here, pressing it like this. And your fingers are just pulling it towards, you see, towards the direction of the bow. Like that, yep. Not like this. Okay, not like this. So, back to the form again. See that? See my hand here? Not like this. See the difference? This one, I'm applying the force from the side and I'm forcing it down here. That's wrong. This way, I'm pulling in the direction that the limb uh, belly is facing. Okay. I hope the camera can take a better view of this one. I'm trying to align to the camera. Okay, yeah, this is a very good alignment. And I'm going to see what happens. Okay. Now the string is flexing down, so I'm going to pull the string now. Okay, you see, as I pull, 
You see, the string is in the middle of the bow. The string is kept in the middle. Sorry, I'll put it aside again. It's difficult to align to the camera. Okay. Yeah, this direction, you see. Keep it right aligned. Everything is straight as I pull it. Alright, so those are the, you know, the situations that can cause twist in here and here in both the stringing technique. Uh, the Manchu method is actually my more recommended method uh, because it actually is less likely to twist the bow.